I have a 15-year-old boy um, who's uh, obviously doing his GCSEs at the moment, and um, he's uh, being challenged with some wonderful stuff in things like English and history. Um, he's been reading Othello, uh, comparing it with Animal Farm. Uh, and uh, in, in music, he's getting to play and experience some really exciting music. In mathematics, he's bored out of his skull. And uh, I was sort of given a challenge, actually, here by the Royal Institution um, to about, uh, to, in 2006 to give the Royal Institution Christmas lectures and to try and give my vision of what uh, I've told to talk to 11 to 14-year-olds and try and give my vision of what what they should be doing in school. Because uh, I think Conrad's right. They've really um, sort of got rather obsessed with just doing sort of calculations. And it's a little bit like learning a musical instrument um, where nobody ever plays you any real music and you're just learning to do scales and arpeggios all the time. And, and that's uh, uh, not, not going to excite people. Now, Conrad's very right that at the moment, there's the mathematics in the popular uh, field. It, it, people are very excited about it. There's a great appetite for it. The BBC are happy to put it on primetime television, BBC Two, um, uh, the Radio Four are doing things, the newspapers, publishers love. But, but they're not talking about the mechanisms of maths. They're talking about the big ideas. That's what people get excited by in the general public, are the big ideas, the stories of maths. And I think that's what we're failing to do at the moment, is actually to, to get to teaching the big stories, the big pieces of music, the big ideas of maths. Uh, and that's why I've called this kind of teaching the Shakespeare um, of mathematics. Now, I suppose in some ways, you know, this, is, this two days is about trying to uh, look at a new, perhaps, curriculum, new way to invigorate mathematics in school, because I think uh, it's right, there is a sort of crisis across the world. Um, but what I would like to do is almost put a, a sort of a orthogonal space onto what Conrad is hoping to do here, and, and, and uh, hopefully give you an idea to just keep in mind teaching those big ideas, that it's not just about the utility of the subject. I'm a big believer that actually ancient Greek is the wrong comparison here. It is about English. Why do we teach kids Shakespeare? Not because it's useful, but because it's enriching and it's going to show us big ideas which will lead to utility. A university at the moment, we're totally obsessed with impact. And as uh, Martin Rees said last week, this is not the way to create exciting new technology if to constantly think about impact. It's about to be excited by big ideas. I think Conrad's right. You can teach calculus to a kid if you have the right way of talking about the story. And for me, I would say that you can teach something like four-dimensional geometry to a four, 11 to 14-year-old because they do coordinate geometry. It's just about ideas. It's not about anything very technical. Here we are at the Royal Institution, which if you use the GPS to find your way here, can be identified by two numbers, uh, not a longitude and a latitude. So here are the two numbers which would have got, got you to the Royal Institution. This changes, this is Descartes' great idea, to change geometry into numbers. It's an idea, it's a way to translate something into another area where things become a bit easier. So I can start to describe shapes in terms of numbers. So a square is described by four pairs of numbers, uh, with a point at 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, up to 1, 1. A cube, you've got an extra coordinate, you can go to three dimensions. The dictionary runs out on the geometric side, but the other side, the numbers side, carries on. I can add a fourth coordinate to this and start to get a kid to explore what a four-dimensional cube would look like. It's got four uh, entries which vary between zeros and ones, so they can tell me how many corners there are on a four-dimensional cube. Well, that's bloody exciting to go home and say, you know, I've explored a four-dimensional cube today. Um, and, uh, and it isn't anything more than people learning coordinate geometry. But it's about why aren't we showing people these lovely ideas? Uh, we can actually show them if you, uh, if you think about how um, three-dimensional artists draw a, a, a cube on a two-dimensional canvas. They draw a square with another square inside and join up the sides. Well, we can draw a four-dimensional cube in three dimensions. Here it is at the Arch of La Défense in Paris. Uh, my uh, son went off on a trip to Disneyland, a maths trip to Disneyland with his school, um, where unfortunately they just did the statistics of queuing. Um, but we, they did do a little trip, and um, I, you know, I do try and enrich my kid, just as Conrad enriches his daughter with calculus. And I'd already told him that this is a shadow of a four-dimensional cube. You know, and he said to his teacher as they uh, looked up uh, towards the La Défense, you know, there is a shadow of a four-dimensional cube. And people were kind of like, wow, what is that? Um, but you know, it's very simple to explain it in, in quite simple sorts of mathematics. And if you want utility, sure, this kind of um, uh, way of encoding data is used by every uh, mobile phone and uh, the way that we encode data in the digital community is using um, this sort of technology. 
So I'm a great believer that, yeah, the technology should be used to sort of facilitate big ideas. For me, I'm a great believer in G.H. Hardy's idea that mathematics is a creative subject. Not, it's not about the utility. He's only interested in maths as a creative art. That's not to say I'm not interested in computers. I mean, I'm involved in Manga High, which you're going to hear about a little later on, which is about using games to teach curriculum. Um, but I, and I certainly use uh, uh, Mathematica a lot in my own research to play around with ideas. But I think you also need to tack onto that and keep in mind the big ideas as well. And if you say, well, it's just too difficult, um, how, how can you teach four-dimensional geometry to a, a school kid? I always love this little uh, passage from Terry Pratchett's not, uh, story, The Thief of Time. Uh, Susan is a teacher talking to her, to her head teacher. What precisely was it that you wanted, madam, she said. It's just that I've left the class doing algebra and they get restless when they're finished. Algebra, said Madame Frout, but that's far too difficult for seven-year-olds. Yes, but I didn't tell them that and so far they haven't found out, said Susan. Thank you.